The hurt and worth week for Wall Street is coming to an end. Investors are unnerved, so the New York session today could be rough. The burning issue remains the federal debt ceiling, and the long-awaited deal or the lack of any decision could make a serious impact on a market sentiment. Another catalyst today is the PCE price index. The stock market opened and closed with the same sentiment. The high-tech sector looked a strong rally. The energy sector closed with the sharp losses. The Dow Jones shed a modest 0.11%, the Nasdaq recouped early losses and closed 1.71% up. The S&P 500 climbed by 0.88% to close at 4,151 points. The benchmark indexes traded higher quietly in the New York pre-market. However, the PCE price index dampened optimism. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the interday Canada between 4,130 and 4,150 points. The depth ceiling deal could drag in the, uh, the index down to 4,040 points. Alternatively, the lack of progress could push it up to 4,210. Yesterday, the market responded to some progress in the talks among lawmakers and the optimism about the artificial intelligence. Statements from a chipmaker NVIDIA triggered a rally in the high-tech stocks. Still, the stock market traded under pressure. The lingering talks on a capital hill caused massive stock sell-offs in the amount of $1.14 billion. It was the sixth day of a selling on Wall Street. Investors sold shares in the healthcare, industrial and energy sectors worth 141 million, 183 million and 174 million dollars respectively. Yesterday, investors realized that the high anticipated deal would be nailed down soon. US President Joe Biden and the top Republican in the Congress, Kevin McCartney, were close to an agreement on the US national debt ceiling. There was only $70 billion difference between the parties in the deal. Chipmaker Nvidia distracted the market from the talks and the pessimistic prospect of a default. Nvidia shares jumped by more than 24% after the firm reported better-than-expected earnings. The rally of Wall Street this year has been mainly triggered by high-tech stocks. Indeed, the FANG plus TM index of the top 10 digital chip and tech companies has surged by 55%. Nvidia's 25% rise led to a sharp rise in the entire chip sector on the Thursday. The minutes of the latest Fed meeting released on the Wednesday showed that policymakers generally agreed that the need for further rate hikes has become less evident. Boston Fed President Susan Collins said on Thursday that it may be time for the US Central Bank to hit the pause button on its rate hike campaign to assess the impact of a monetary tightening. Much of the morning's data supported further Fed tightening, so traders ignored Collins' comments. The Department of Labor reported that the number of first-time unemployment claims increased slightly last week and the data for the previous week were sharply downgraded. Futures for Wall Street indexes on a Friday tried to remain optimistic yesterday but traded in a subdued manner in anticipation of the debt limit deal and a key inflation indicator. Friday brings uh, some hope that uh, the White House and the congressional leaders will, will be able to sign an agreement to raise the U.S. debt ceiling just before the Treasury Department runs out of cash next week. 
It's unclear exactly how much time Congress has left to act. Despite the Treasury Department insisting that June 1st is the deadline, it said on a Thursday it would sell 119 billion of debt maturing that day, suggesting it's not a rock-solid deadline. Even if the debt ceiling is raised, the Treasury will have to rush to issue up to $1 trillion in new debt securities to meet short-term funding needs. Moody's expects the US government to continue paying its debts on time, but lawmakers' public statements during the talks could change its assessment of US credit prospects ahead of a potential default. Moody's currently suggests a US government rating of AAA with a stable outlook. These are all alarming signs for risky assets because Monday is a public holiday in the United States. If legislators do not come out with a ready-made decision today, Wall Street might take a no dive. As for the economic data, they do not support the stock market today, at least the inflation indicator for personal consumption expenditures. Personal consumption expenditures in the United States rose higher than expected in April. The core PCE, excluding food and energy prices, climbed by 0.4% in April on months, higher than the expected 0.3% growth. The annual index, which is the Fed's preferable inflation barometer, unexpectedly grew to 4.7%, an uptick higher than the market consensus. In a separate report, durable goods orders increased by 1.1% in April from a month ago, following the upgraded 3.3% growth in March. The score for April confronted the projected decline of 1%. Personal income grew by 0.4% last month after the 0.3% growth in March in line with the market expectations. The last figure is the strongest growth in the past three months. At the same time, personal spending steeply jumped by 0.8%, the highest reading in the last three months, and twice higher than the consensus of 0.4%. Steady consumer spending, the growth in a personal income and the durable goods orders, and above all else, the higher PCE paints a gloomy picture for the stock market, so investors could revise the forecast of the Fed's post in June. The scenario of the funds rate above 6% could become realistic. Tonight, the market will get to know the revised consumer sentiment index by the University of Michigan for May. In the corporate news, the shares of a clothing retailer Gap jumped by 11.8%. 7% in the pre-market trading after reporting a surprise first quarter profit on a Thursday. Shares of a chip maker Marvel Technology leapt by 15.8% after it predicted its annual all revenue world double. The US dollar index is fluctuating quietly and even dipped below 104 points due to recovery of the euro and the pound sterling. The US dollar index is likely to trade in the intraday corridor between 103.5 and 104.5 points. Despite a minor decline on Friday, the greenback maintains overall bullish momentum for three weeks straight because the market increased the bets on the Fed's higher interest rates. The annual rise of the PCE price index for 4.7% will again force traders to reconsider bets on interest rates. Investors will quickly recall all the hawkish Fed speakers and the announcements of a 6% increase in the borrowing costs, which could support the US dollar in the longer term. Visible progress in the talks between President Joe Biden and top Republican Kevin McCartney softened market jitters, but investors remained on the edge over the risk of a default. Monday will be bank holiday and Washington needs to settle a deal 
today. In anticipation of this crucial event, the dollar index traded just below a two months high and was still on a track for a weekly gain of about 0.8%. The Canadian dollar tried to regain its footing earlier today, but the fresh U.S. inflation data supported the greenback, so the USD card pair slipped by 0.04% to trade at 1.3631. The end of the Canada for the instrument is seen between 1.3570 and 1.3670. Thursday was not the best day for the loony and the oil market. Oil prices tumbled by $3 after Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak downplayed the possibility of a further OPEC plus production cuts at the summit next week. Oil prices traded quietly on an early Friday and reversed up in the New York pre-market. Brand crude climbed by 0.8% to trade at $76.92 a barrel and WTI rose by 1.3%. Both benchmark rates are expected to close the week with a 1% gain, and the debt ceiling deal could encourage a recovery in oil prices. Market sentiment is confused in the light of the comments by Russia's president. He said that energy prices are approaching economically justified levels, and Alexander Novak was on the same page. Their remarks contrast uh, with the comments made by the Saudi energy minister earlier this week, who warned short sellers to beware of a pain. In any case, the energy market, the loony and other assets today depend on a political agreement on the debt ceiling in the United States. The crypto market is also in the wait-and-see mood. Bitcoin has gained ground, now trading at about $26,400. The token gave a muted response to inflation acceleration in the United States. Apparently, the flagship crypto is anticipating a catalyst from Washington. Popular altcoins are trading mixed. All digital assets have neglected the industry news and the red-hot macroeconomic data. Inflation acceleration could have weakened cryptocurrencies, but not today. All crypto assets, and the Bitcoin in particular, are sensitive to the debt limit drama. Until the deal is settled, Bitcoin is expected to trade in the Canada between $26,200 and $26,600. So that's all for today. We keep monitoring the financial market situation and wish you a successful trading day and profitable trading week ending. Subscribe to the channel uh, and see you on Monday.